No one wants to be in pain or to see loved ones suffer. No one wants to feel like they're a burden to others or to be left alone when support is needed most. Many of us fear these things and look to documents like advanced directives to articulate our wishes as we approach death. But in our effort to control the circumstances of our dying and death, we may end up doing ourselves terrible harm. In most cases, we have no way of knowing what the future circumstances of our sickness or dying process will be. You know, as a physician, this greatly concerns me. I actually try to discourage patients, except under very limited circumstances, to do this. For example, a signed document limits what I can do when it's needed. A patient might have a completely reversible and treatable condition and that could cause death, like a, a condition like a, a severe allergic reaction or even a kidney infection that could be treated with antibiotics. And instead of treating them, they die. Now, I'm not talking about overtreatment. I'm talking about providing the best care, the optimal care that's needed in a given moment in time. The Catholic Medical Association, made up of Catholic doctors and healthcare professionals, has voiced opposition to a directive called Physician Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment, or PULST. In some states, it may have various other titles, such as MOLST, or Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. PULST or MOLST poses several serious concerns. The PULST is not written by you, the patient, but is generated by a healthcare provider who need not even be a physician. It has been criticized for placing more power in the hands of providers than in those of patients. Who's to ensure your wishes are being accurately represented? Second, once a post is signed, it doesn't have to be reviewed, even if the status of your health changes, for better or worse. Once signed by a physician, Pulsed becomes a doctor's order to other medical staff and may even override the patient's own past advanced directives, including the appointment of a health care agent. Worst of all, the Pulsed can restrict the kind of care you will receive and may lead to your premature death when reasonable options are, in fact, available. It may be applied to those who are not terminally ill and who might need only antibiotics, food and fluids, or other basic care. In fact, one of the central checkboxes on many pulsed forms allows for food and water to be withheld when tubes are required. The Catholic Church teaches that food and water are ordinary means of care that we are generally morally required to provide, even if providing them may at times require some medical assistance. We should not think that starvation and dehydration will bring comfort. Food and water must never be withheld or withdrawn in order to cause or hasten death. For all these reasons, a number of our nation's bishops have recommended that we not sign these documents. At vulnerable moments, when we're most in need of good care, do we really want a document restricting what's best for us? How then do we ensure that our wishes are being carried out if and when we no longer can make decisions for ourselves? The best way is to designate someone who knows you, who knows your Catholic values, and who's willing to act on your behalf should the need ever arise. I don't think we should rely on overly rigid documents. I think trusted people, not checkboxes, are the best way to provide guidance about appropriate medical care and treatment at the end of life. As a Catholic community, we're called to love one another as Christ loved us, in sickness and in health, in times of rejoicing and in times of suffering. God's infinite love for us helps us grasp our great dignity and worth. For more information on how to obtain Catholic guidelines and alternatives to Pulse documents, please visit capmed.org.